What's up guys and welcome back for another solo mining episode, episode 92. So in this one we're going to be doing some alpha mining now and we're going to talk about alpha mining and kind of why I do it, um, why someone might still want to keep an alpha tune around. But we're out here in the venture today, we're focusing on pyro, um, that's you know basically to get Mexilon. Um, and this tune actually, its job is to supply my industry tune with whatever they need um and sometimes i just enjoy going back and doing just like regular you know low effort i guess you could say low effort um alpha mining and everything but i've done a lot of alpha mining in this series and i don't think i've ever really explained why i kind of keep an alpha tune around and why i kind of continue going out there and uh and kind of doing it but a lot of it is has to do with you know maintaining a perspective it's very easy to kind of go really deep into omega mining and doing max yield and everything and lose sight of what it's really like for newer people getting into mining what they're experiencing at the entry point and my content on this channel is not just for uh, experienced miners but also people getting into mining and starting fresh and everything so in my opinion keeping a very very realistic and up-to-date perspective on what it's like for a new player is very important there are also some monetary reasons why you might want to keep an alpha tune around it also it also kind of demonstrates and me you know alpha mining on this channel kind of demonstrates that you don't necessarily need to pay a monthly subscription to enjoy industry to enjoy mining you can still get out there and kind of do um do quite a bit with um without paying for omega there is a big stigma around mining that you need to be uh omega you need to be max uh, <laughs> max yield have all these skills to, you know even to even really enjoy it which i don't i don't think is true you don't necessarily need to have max skills max yield to enjoy mining we i i spend so much time out here alpha mining that it's sometimes it's like almost like back to basics for the most part it's really nice to just kind of not have a whole lot of commitment on that uh tune and also let's just talk about logistics now i'm currently if you watched like the most recent episodes i'm in the process of simplifying my entire my entire uh kind of operation down to as few accounts uh as possible and i would say that i have my my main my main just kind of sits in jita and just kind of does the trade thing um it'll probably never leave jita for the most part because i have tunes you know that are kind of trained for certain things so aside from the main i have my my main mining alt and this tune has reprocessing skills it can fly orca it can do basically anything i need it to do in terms of mining um, i recently actually am changing that tune over the tune we've been using for this series uh is now sitting in jita and she is going to eventually get completely uh her uh, skill points are going to get completely sucked out um and the main reason i'm doing that is because that character sits on a uh its own account and I'm going to bring her back to her original uh, purpose, which was a Sino alt. And then uh, the new mining alt is actually um, just on a different character slot. So I can just kind of have everything I need, the main things that I need on those characters on one account for simplicity reasons. And then also, um, I still run my uh, my industry tune, which if you watch the uh, member only uh, series for solo mining, that's what that tune is. That tune is uh, implanted for manufacturing so uh and its skills are very heavy into manufacturing and resource processing and things like that and then uh the alpha tune here and then a lot of the other tunes i have that are basically on their way out are essentially just got like two or so years of uh, omega left and they're just kind of just training in jita and then ever six months or so i'm just pulling their their skill points out i won't be <laughs> i won't actually be able to get rid of those characters completely for another like probably 18 uh actually probably another like 24 months or so but uh the uh the skill points that they're actually generating are going directly into the operation um with the main mining alt and the industry alt so they're still serving a pretty good purpose even though i'm not actively using them 
I do like flea mining, don't get me wrong. Um, I probably won't be doing a whole lot of it um, for this series anymore. Just because I am, just, after doing so much in this game and doing so much across different uh, areas of space, I, I just simplification is one thing that I'm just really, really looking forward to uh, achieving. And in terms of Equinox, there's going to be a lot of um, interesting things that are going to happen with industry and with mining. Uh, specifically, the uh, the new arrays. They're kind of redesigning the um, iHub upgrades to where you can put in like um, trait uh, array so you can get Veldspar sites in Nullsec. You can basically target certain uh, materials and those material rich uh, sites will generate or spawn in system. This is a really only a benefit to being in a corporation or an alliance that can maintain the hub and put those upgrades in. Not so much for solo. You can operate in Nullsec solo. I've done it in the past. It's just expensive and it doesn't mean that you can't mine and pay for all that stuff in terms of like rent and things like that. But it, it sets um, a precedence of how much you are required to play to maintain that level of play. Which I don't necessarily like being uh, dictated like that. If I can only play a couple hours today or maybe I can't play at all over the weekend. I don't want to feel pressured to have to log in for X amount of time for a certain day. I, I did that a lot whenever I played other games. Um, especially like things like WoW or like any sort of MMO where it's like, oh, I have to log in and do these dailies. I have to grind this reputation or else I'm, my timeline is going to be kind of skewed on, you know, gear upgrades or whatever. And I've gotten away from, from having the game mandate what I, what I need to do on a daily basis. I do have some friends in Nullsec, so I have a feeling that they will probably be, uh, be looking into the, the new hub upgrades and everything. I'll probably actually uh, donate them some some is to help them get kind of set up with the new system, which I like to do. The friends that I have, even though I don't play actively with them, I still like to help them out um, and uh, do uh, corp donations and stuff like that. So there might be a situation in the future where we'll do like a special episode where I'll go out there with an alt and we'll kind of look at the new sites and everything. But for the most part, for Equinox, um, kind of not really going to be seeing a lot of changes in my day-to-day -day kind of a gameplay loop if you read the patch notes that came out today or yesterday they, oh they came out yeah they came out yesterday they are reducing some uh material requirements in industry for certain items making a lot of a cap they're making a lot of capital manufacturing adjustments which if you are getting into capital ship construction and doing that kind of stuff then that's going to be a little bit easier uh going forward but overall, Equinox is going to be looking pretty good. Um, the main thing you'll probably end up seeing um, with this channel and with this series, we'll probably be looking, looking at the new uh, Upwell uh, ships and kind of how uh, how they fare versus what I normally use. I normally use just like Blockade uh, Runner and Displaced Transports for uh, Kaldari, but we'll bring in those new ships once they can kind of uh, saturate into the market. They're going to be The price is going to be super high on that stuff when they first come out. Because the um, the BPOs or the uh, BBCs or uh, stuff like that is going to get seeded, and then they're going to have to go through the like, the invention process. And I don't even know if they're like considered tech twos or whatever. I haven't looked into it. It's going to take a while for the market to kind of like get saturated with that stuff and let the price kind of uh, normalize. Kind of like when um, Havoc came out, all those new ships that came out with Havoc, very, 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 very overpriced in the beginning. You have to kind of wait. You have to wait till a new new kind of wears off of everything, and and it all kind of uh, kind of stabilizes and everything. So we'll uh, we'll we'll look out for that. We'll be you know kind of cross comparing the two, and I'll see um, if they are going to be worth kind of adding into my um, whole rotation. But today we're just kind of worrying about pyro. I'm doing like Mexilon targeting for the most part. Um, I really just want to kind of talk about, you know, alpha mining and stuff like that. I think that everybody should have at least one alpha tune that they just never upgrade to Omega. Just, uh, you know, go out there and, you know, have fun. And that's the other thing, too, is, like, as you start adding skills into, like, if you're running, like, a single account or even a single character or very few characters, 
when you start training a lot into your main character and it is uh you know maybe it's over it needs to be over somewhere doing like moon mining if you wanted to go out there and do like starter system um mining to minimize travel the the alpha tune makes a, a lot of sense right because you can create that account create that character let it kind of train passively to run a venture and then you can put it somewhere that doesn't necessarily displace your main um, if there had to be in a system for moon mining or they have to be somewhere specific for manufacturing or or stuff that they're doing for the corp I see alpha tunes as kind of like an extension like a uh, I can you know put them in like and I've even had alpha tunes uh, kind of placed in um, in known systems where like uh, rare orb uh, sites kind of spawn and log into them one at a time and kind of see if there's any rare ore sites in their system if there is or if they're in the vicinity it, it cuts down travel time um, and it's very low overhead in terms of uh, real world cost and things like that obviously it's not the best yield you can take an al you can take an omega in you know a uh, expeditionary frigate or a porpoise for those rare ore sites and travel can be you know minimalized quite a bit but uh, I, I just there's uh, there's some value in actually having an alpha tune kind of around and even with the new expert system you can technically you can technically actually get the expert system and then just never dock again and just pay for it once and then you could technically um, use like uh, some some sort of hauler or something that, that an alpha can use or like a jet can actually you don't even have to do that if you have like a citadel, let's say your corporation has like a citadel, like a um, Austra house or you know anything, any player structure, you can buy the expert system. You can get the retriever. You can <laughs> train into it, never dock again, and then in order to just dump ore, you could literally just go up and cargo deposit. You know, and I don't necessarily think that's you know viable. I mean, you want to be able to dock and stuff. But I know I've. See people on Reddit talk about how they paid for like the uh, expert system once and they just never dock on that tune again, which seems kind of like tying your own hands behind your back for the most part. I mean, the expert system is pretty cheap and in the time you get with that uh, retriever on that alpha tune, you can make uh, some pretty serious uh, headway on, you know, working towards Omega. But, you know, Plex is going to probably continue to go up. Um, Hopefully, Omega cost doesn't continue to go up as well. But right now, it's very, very possible to kind of just you know mine into that. You know, like we like this whole series is kind of based on we we took a, an Alpha Tune, we mined into Omega, and we just maintained it. You know, it's possible. Is it for everybody now? And it's like you always want it's always you always want to prioritize fun over over everything like that because just like I said earlier in this video, the whole goal, the challenge that we had starting this episode about you know getting that alpha tune to pay for omega that was letting the uh the goal the challenge dictate what we need to do per day which you know it leads to burnout uh, so that is why we're out here just chilling we're just chilling in uh, alpha mining don't have to worry about being efficient and being you know getting a certain amount of isk per day to make sure that we can cover omega when it expires sometimes it's easier just to swipe the card it really is especially if you enjoy the the game and you enjoy the content you don't have you don't want to worry about that kind of stuff because when you start getting into like manufacturing and industry if you don't have to worry about uh, omega and all you're doing is just you know using your money to facilitate manufacturing one less thing to worry about but i figured i'd touch a little bit on you know alpha mining i think it's still something that everybody should keep like an alpha tune around just to like you know test changes or just to have like of kind of like a little free like you know extension that can go out and be assigned to uh, certain areas and stuff but thank you guys for watching hit that like button hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one peace out